for those that follow it, like our neighbor. And it's Thanksgiving week as well. Uh, some of you will be traveling, I'm sure. I hope there's lots of happy reunions with, uh, with family. Uh, the pilot kind of taken place last year. And again, as I say that, the uptick in coronavirus cases in Michigan are just alarming. So, on this seasonal cusp, again, welcome to worship. We acknowledge the altar flowers given by the Wagners to the glory of God. We remind you about the midday prayer service on Tuesdays from 1215 to 1245. And... It says Sunday school and confirmation class today, but I thought that might have not might not be taking place, or is it? It's not taking place. Okay. It would have taken place, I guess, by this point. Christ the King Sunday is relatively new to people that follow this liturgical year. Uh, it actually started in 1925, which seems like a long time ago, but when you think of the uh, uh, Christian church year, which has been around for a long, long time, it's relatively new. It was started by the one who uh, became uh, the Pope, Pope Pius the Eleventh, and he declared it to be a holiday, a celebration, in the light of rising secularism in the world at that time, especially those uh, authoritarian governments that eventually led to World War II. So it's a time to claim our place in Christ's kingdom to celebrate Christ the King. With that, I invite you to stand and join in our opening to worship. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Morning. The first, read, the first reading is from Daniel chapter 7. To the community for whom this passage was written, it seemed as though the oppression they were experiencing would never end. Daniel's message is, it shall end. The ancient one who is judge will call all nations to account and will give dominion to one like a human being, the Messiah. The reading begins. As I watched, thrones were set in place and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with clouds of heaven, and he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Please read Psalm 93 responsibly. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation begins by celebrating the Almighty God who spans all of time. Similarly, Jesus is celebrated as the firstborn from the dead who rules over the world's rulers. He is the one whose return we eagerly await. The reading begins. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. 
If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I always neglect to uh, give a welcome to our online community of worshipers, uh, and I know that's a significant number of people because it seems like every week when I check in on the number of views, I'm pleasantly surprised by how many there are that view this service online, live, with us, or perhaps later uh, because of your recording. So again, welcome to the online worshipers. And my apologies ahead of time if there's any sound issues, okay? It seems like sound problems follow me wherever I go. So if there's any problems, hopefully you can let the technicians know as soon as possible. Anyway. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would imagine that if we took a survey of movies that have uh, references to kings or are specifically about kings, we could come up with a pretty long list. Maybe you'd uh, include a movie like uh, uh, that about a real king. Uh, the King's Speech, for instance, about King George VI of England. Or somebody who is named King, like a documentary about Martin Luther King, Jr. Maybe a musical, like The King and I. Maybe an animated movie, like The Lion King. And then there's one of my favorites, where the cowardly lion sings the immortal words if I were the king of the forest. <laughs> you probably have all seen that many times. But my favorite is probably Titanic. Maybe some of you can already tell where I'm going here. Titanic is a fictionalized version of a real historical event, of course. And Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo Di DiCaprio, is a poor young man who luckily, <laughs> luckily, gets a ticket to ride the Titanic on its maiden voyage. He, by fate, is pulled into a relationship with a wealthy young woman on the upper deck named Rose. And the relationship blossoms on this trip, and Jack is just effusive about it. And do you remember the scene I'm referring to where they end up at the front of the boat, the very prow, he gets up on the railing, and what does he say? I'm the king of the world. Of course, it's very ironic. Knowing the story, we know the tragedy that awaits. And that leads us to Jesus and this story the scene of him and Pontius Pilate. Now, we've had all these stories about Jesus in recent weeks in this liturgical year leading up to today. We've had these stories of his healings, of his miracles, of wise saying and pronouncements and sermons. And this should be a day of claiming all those glorious things, right? But the gospel lesson has Jesus before Pilate, about to be condemned to death, about to be handed a crown, yes, but a crown of thorns. As Christ followers, this is our irony and our paradox all the time. How will we confess in the creed, I believe in Jesus Christ, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified 
died and was buried. Yet Jesus, despite not having a governmental framework, not commanding an army, not even in charge of a rebel force that could possibly deal with Pilate, represents a kingdom that has real power and force. As Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. Yet, I think there's some marks of the kingdom that we can lift up that appear among us, that are lived among us. Shall we? Four marks that I'm particularly thinking of. The first being the mark of sacrificial love. Sacrificial love. Not armies, not defense departments, but sacrificial love. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. So I'm asking you around your Thanksgiving tables this week, as you gather with family, small gatherings, large, I'm sure there will be prayers of thanksgiving for the food, for your family, hopefully for good health, for this great nation, maybe for the military, maybe for veterans, maybe for those who have died among your close ones. But I ask you to also include prayers of thanksgiving for the sacrificial lovers of our communities. The first responders, the health care workers, the ones who will be in nursing homes assisting and helping on Thursday, the ones who are dragged down by this coronavirus pandemic and at the point of exhaustion in so many of our care centers and hospitals. Give God thanks. They are truly a mark of sacrificial love. Secondly, a mark of Jesus' kingdom is grace, God's grace, God's gift of undeserved love and mercy and forgiveness. And the gratitude that I believe grace leads to. Jesus lets us in on a wonderful scene in the temple from a story earlier in Mark called The Widow's Might. And maybe you know the widow's might story. Jesus is observing people coming to bring their offerings to the temple. And then he noticed this poor widow who drops in a few coins. And he says, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put everything she had, all she had to live on. I believe this woman was living by grace. Grace that she knew came from God. Hopefully, maybe someday soon, she would know that Jesus was bringing in a special kingdom for her as well. A grace that leads to gratitude. So, this week, I'm sure there will be much food and football in your experiences, but I'll bet There are also donations of food baskets, gifts of love to homeless shelters, maybe invitations to families who are on the edge and would appreciate that one good meal, if not more. I'll just bet those marks of grace will be among your experiences too. The third mark of Jesus' kingdom, servanthood, servanthood. There's no emphasis upon status in Jesus' kingdom, no emphasis upon political power or position with Jesus. In fact, a story a couple weeks ago in the gospel was when two of Jesus' disciples came to him and with, with that request, Jesus, give us a special place on your right hand and on your left hand when you come into your kingdom. And what does Jesus say? Whoever wishes to be gr- become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Give thanks for the servants this week. 
The servants right here at Gloria Day. The servants who lead in various ways this community of faith. The servants who are part of the forefront of reaching out and caring for particular people in need. Such servanthood is a mark of Jesus' kingdom. Fourthly, the mark of inclusion and welcome. There are no barriers and walls in Jesus' kingdom that isolate and separate as much of a political hot potato discussion of walls might be. Jesus' action shows that he breaks down barriers. He reaches across walls and those cultural and social divides. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians, there's no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. That oneness, that inclusion and diversity and welcome is a mark of Jesus' kingdom. A couple of years ago for Thanksgiving, we were at my daughter's in Elmhurst, Illinois, and one of her neighbors had this sign on their front lawn. In our America, all people are equal. Love wins. Black lives matter. Immigrants and refugees are welcome. Disabilities are respected. Women are in charge of their bodies. People and planet are valued over profit. Diversity is celebrated. Yes, I know some of those phrases are controversial. Some of those phrases might even be considered dangerous. But after all, Jesus was about to be condemned for living those kinds of phrases in his ministry. Living in the kingdom isn't always easy, and it sometimes is downright dangerous. But we are still called to be part of that kingdom through Christ's mercy and blessing. So those are my four. I'm sure there are more, but maybe you particularly relate to one of these, or maybe you can think of several others. Do that this week too. Think of how you are part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Think how there are people here among you that are exemplifying marks of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And give thanks. Give thanks. Hopefully you won't have to watch any old movies to get inspired. And eventually, as Advent and Christmas come, we'll be singing about the King as well. Maybe in old words like that of Handel's Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever. Wonderful, wonderful conclusion as we have it to the Christmas part of Handel's Messiah. Or maybe it'll be newer words. Mary, did you know your baby boy is Lord of all creation? A blessed Christ the King Sunday. A blessed beginning to Thanksgiving week. A blessed realization of Jesus' kingdom among you and your family this glorious, <laughs> Gloria Day, yeah, this glorious Gloria Day community, and more. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Please rise as you are able as we continue with our confession of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you sent your Son, Jesus, to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you sent your Son, Jesus, to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering. Especially we pray for Tom, Courtney, Donna, Juliana, Mike, Kathy, Teddy, Jerry, Rose, Tom, Kara, Betty, Linda, Sandy, Jim, Pastor Sarah, our confirmation class, Aubrey and Braden, Claire and Mike and Lamar, we pray for the family of Alex Wallace and all those struggling with COVID-19 all over the world. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. Especially, we pray for those we name in our hearts at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
We continue with our confession of sins and statement of forgiveness. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We pray in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcome. I invite the, uh, you to be seated. We'll sing the Lamb of God, and if the assistants could come up to prepare at this time.
the uh, bread in the back. Others may wish to receive from, from the front. Come for all things are ready. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Let us stand for the closing hymn. with one another. So with that in mind, we're going to sing Bind Us Together. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah!